We have a new player on the field of internet research, enter artificial intelligence, better known as AI. Now, an example of AI would be a program like ChatGPT. This is probably the most prominent at the moment. And so ChatGPT is officially a language processing model that's trained on a large pool of data. And basically in simple terms, what it is is an interactive tool that you can ask questions, you can give commands in which it will scan that large pool of data and intellectually process the information and then deliver it back to you in a conversational medium. This is a good example of disruptive technology. Disruptive in the sense that it is disrupting or transforming the industries that it applies to. So as you can imagine, this is digging up a lot of confusion or differing opinions opinions among people. So right now I want to say, do me a favor, go to the comment section, let me know your initial impressions of artificial intelligence for learning and any questions you may have and stick around to the end because I'm going to give you my unbridled, honest opinion of what I think about the introduction of artificial intelligence in the academic world. So we have a general understanding of what ChatGPT is. On a foundational level, it is just an information processing machine. So it's changing the way we locate information, how we comprehend information, and also how we articulate information. I've researched tons of things that we can do with this machine and narrowed it down to three pillars when it comes to the academic world. Number one, it's a tool for comprehensive learning and research. Number two, you can use it to synthesize or summarize content. And number three, yes, you can use it to create content. Number three, we will definitely get into later on. But first things first, if you're new to this topic, you can check out the free version of ChatGPT. Go to this website right here. It's super easy to use. And quite frankly, I'm going to be showing you how to do it. So let's go ahead and move on. Now, the way you communicate with a program like ChatGPT is through prompting. A prompt is what you put into the machine to get the response. So it is the input that determines the output. Think of it as marching orders. It can be a question, a command, or even just a statement, something to get the ball rolling. So let's say you're researching software development, specifically how to write code. The way you'd get the ball rolling in this example is you might prompt ChatGPT to simply explain the concept of writing code. Once you receive the initial response, this now becomes a matter of refinement, meaning you're going to evaluate the responses and then refine your prompts to lead you closer to your goals. Your first refinement here might be to ask for context. So that's going to build on the definition understanding that you received in the previous prompt. Now you want to know how it applies to real life and check it out. It's giving you an example of what it would be like working as a software developer. So you decide that you like the example. Now your next prompt might be to ask for five more examples, or perhaps you choose a different route. Let's say your understanding is still a bit hazy. You can prompt ChatGPT to give you a comparison or an analogy. Now this is where ChatGPT starts to get wild because check out the answer. So it's comparing the process of writing code to the process of writing the recipe for a complex dish. Here's the thing. I don't personally understand anything about writing code, but I love cooking. I cook all the time. So this analogy, it brings something like writing code down to my level of understanding. ChatGPT is truly amazing in this regard. And quite frankly, this is leading into means of simplification. So if we're to go down that route, another really cool thing you can do is you can pick personas on ChatGPT. So in your next prompt, you might ask Chat GPT to simplify the concept of writing code by explaining it to a five-year-old or even a fifth grader. And matter of fact, you can start with explaining to a fifth grader and then ask them to explain it to a college student. This will give you a strong foundational understanding of that concept because you're layering on the knowledge. Researching and writing college papers just became so much easier, but there's no sugarcoating this. And that is that 
using artificial intelligence for academic purposes is going to impact your learning. It's going to impact what you learn, how you learn, and how much of it you retain. Because quite frankly, anything you apply artificial intelligence to is going to water down whatever that thing was. An important part of our learning is processing information or going through a process. Going back to what I said earlier, ChatGPT is an information processing machine. So yeah, it is going to have an impact on your learning. So quite frankly, I'm not here to scare you. I'm here to emphasize that it's your responsibility to learn how to use artificial intelligence as a tool for learning and not as a shortcut for doing. But don't worry, this is what I'm here for. We're gonna do a deep dive into the world of artificial intelligence for academics here on the channel. Next up, we're gonna talk about the foundation of prompting.